Hi, I'm Luke. In this video we'll explore how the arts curriculum works and how it relates to your professional learning and teaching practice. An integral part of the performance and development culture that we all strive for in our schools is to ensure that we engage in meaningful and well-planned creative experiences with our students. This helps to achieve educational and professional aspirations for both you and your students. To unpack how this works for you, we're going to make reference to a number of resources which you can find on the Australian Institute for Teaching and School Leadership website at aitsal.edu.au. The Melbourne Declaration on Educational Goals for Young Australians captures what Australian education is trying to achieve. This declaration creates a vision of Australia as the best performing education system in the world. It is guided by two very important goals. The first is that Australian schooling promotes equity and excellence. The second is that all young Australians become successful learners, confident and creative individuals, and active and informed citizens. How do we achieve this? By making a commitment to work towards these goals through a partnership between government, schools, families, and the community. High quality teaching is fundamental to this commitment. It can seem daunting, but the Australian Teacher Performance and Development Framework, or the Framework, and the Australian Professional Standards for Teachers, known as the Standards, and the Australian Curriculum have been devised to meet this challenge and help you achieve your goals. Let's take a closer look. The framework focuses on a supportive school culture for improving both student and teacher outcomes. The components of the performance and development cycle are reflection and goal setting, professional practice and learning, feedback and review. The framework also stresses the importance of effective implementation and culture change. Underpinning the framework are seven interconnected standards that are organised into three domains. Professional knowledge is about knowing how students learn and how to teach them. Professional practice is concerned with planning, maintaining a safe environment and assessing for student learning. Professional engagement promotes professional learning and development. If you're just starting out in your teaching career, the expectations are not the same as for an experienced teacher. There are four defined career stages. The standards are organised into focus areas and descriptors to help you meet the requirements. So it's not just about the students learning and developing, it's also about the teachers. Your role as a teacher or teaching artist is to understand the arts curriculum and how it can be used across art forms and learning areas to engage students, enrich their educational journey and improve outcomes. You also need to think laterally and innovatively to find new and appropriate methods, resources and tools for delivery and assessment. Teaching the arts curriculum provides exciting opportunities for you, your colleagues and your students to work creatively together. The structure of the curriculum is very straightforward and provides you with lots of scope for linking the arts with other learning areas. There are new possibilities for bringing the entire curriculum to life in an integrated way. So, let's explore what we mean when we're talking about the arts curriculum. The arts curriculum covers five interrelated art forms. Dance, drama, music, visual arts and media arts. When it comes to teaching and learning the arts, it's expected that students will engage with each art form before the end of primary school and begin to specialise by years 9 and 10. The arts curriculum groups year levels in two year bands from years 3 to 10, while foundation to year 2 is a three year band. Each art form is supported by two interrelated strands, making and responding. These strands help define a holistic approach to teaching and learning in the arts. Alongside making and responding, each art subject has its own conventions, terminology and approaches to learning and development. It's important to remember the value of each art form is what it can teach a student rather than focusing on the finished work. It's what the students learn on the journey that matters. Ensuring that you meet the core curriculum outcomes means meeting the requirements of the content descriptions and achievement standards. Content descriptions outline the knowledge, skills and understanding that students are required to learn and you, the teacher, are expected to teach. Concepts and skills develop across the year bands. Content descriptions are supported by elaborations that provide guidance on how you can deliver the content and meet achievement standards. 
Achievement standards define the type and depth of learning students should achieve by the end of each year band. They provide you with guidance in understanding the relationship between the strands, the expected outcomes relevant to each art form, and requirements for assessment. There are two additional elements of the curriculum that are really important for helping you create a framework for thinking about the personal and global skills and knowledge that students require and how you can use the arts to help achieve these outcomes. These elements are the general capabilities and cross-curriculum priorities. The seven general capabilities are defined as the essential capabilities for 21st century learners. They are an integrated set of knowledge, skills and behaviours. Cross-curriculum priorities, on the other hand, focus on three key areas identified by the Melbourne Declaration as being essential for providing students with the skills, knowledge and language to understand and engage in their world. The three priorities are Understanding the link between general capabilities, cross-curriculum priorities and content descriptions assists you in being able to think and plan conceptually or thematically. It offers you the freedom to link the arts to multiple learning areas and create innovative activities with your colleagues and students. This also creates exciting opportunities and challenges for you as a teacher to think about and act on your teaching practice. In particular, it can help you understand what you need to do to meet the teaching standards and what professional learning you could undertake to expand your classroom practice and pedagogical bag of tricks. The overall aim is to ensure that all young Australians become successful, confident, active and creative learners. Now let's take a look at a few tips on teaching the arts. Remember that the arts are a reportable learning area and that it's important to address the content descriptions and achievement standards so that you can meet curriculum requirements. Don't be afraid to think laterally across learning areas and art forms when planning an arts curriculum project. And don't forget the arts are not something that need to be delivered in addition to the general curriculum, but should be seen as a way of enhancing learning outcomes. Be sure to watch the next video, Arts Live in Action, for some tips on how to creatively investigate and integrate the arts curriculum into your teaching practice. I'm Luke, and have fun teaching the arts.